we'll take a look at the career of one of the most mysterious figures in rock music, a man who hit number one three times in a short period of time and then virtually dropped out of sight. Sly Stone of Sly and the Family Stone. up to be somebody that just loves to learn and another child grows up to be somebody you just love to burn it's a family affair sly was only four years old when he cut his first record a gospel song he did with reverend sims and even though he was very young he remembers that experience i just remember the studio and I remember uh, that I, you know, I, I remember at the time I liked, I, I just enjoyed singing in the choir. And I remember I was the, the youngest in the area. And I remember I wanted to be a, a, a preacher or something at the time. But Sly didn't become a preacher. Instead, he joined a group formed by his brother Freddie, the first of many family acts that Sly would be in. Any record that I do, any song that I do in church that was a hit uh, or anywhere else, I try to sound like the people that did the song. So, you know, we'd have a long list I would tell you who, you know, who I tried to sound like. As Sly tells our correspondent Maria Shriver, by the time he was in his early teens, he wasn't only singing in groups, he was also writing songs for them. When I look back on it, I realized I was writing blues, but I had a rock and roll attitude so sometimes it worked and most of the times it didn't by this time sly's family had moved to california and one of sly's first paying jobs was as a dj on an oakland california radio station well one thing on the radio we had dedications and uh willie popcorn and uh tamale those are some of the names that dedicated you know and, uh, all nicknames you know and i I want to dedicate to uh, uh, Jimmy Bell. You know, those kind of things. And I'd write on the radio. That's what I did a lot of times. I wrote behind the board songs, and I'd you know, make notes. Things began to happen for Sly. He got another band together, and with the help of legendary San Francisco DJ Tom Donahue, began to get jobs as a studio producer. Well, I had a band to get the Cow Palace. Well, every time shows came to the Cow Palace, as they do at the Forum or wherever, at that time, there were big bands that uh, took care of all the music. And Sonny and Cher came, or somebody came. Uh, my band would you know, handle all their music. And then Tom Donahue gave me a chance to produce it. Actually, I was making $35 a week. I mean, I had to produce or steal, or beg, or borrow. Uh, there was a group called the Bo Brummels. And they had a song called Let Me Go. Don't mind my preaching to you. I said, don't trust them, baby. Now you know you don't let it. to me. 
when I look back on it, I became a producer. Uh, no, I don't like the way that sounds in order to survive. Because I could get a job, I could, I could be on the radio. Just, you know, to live. That's what I mean. Not to survive. To live. I liked that life. Producing. Sly had his fingers in many musical pies, which all became one big pie with Sly and the Family Stone. <clears throat> Jerry Martini is the guy that really started it. This guy, he, play, he plays saxophone in the group now. And he came to the radio station and decided that, uh, Sly, you ought to be the leader of this group. And I was doing fine at the radio station, I thought. So we started looking around for uh, everybody other than my sisters and my brother, because they were automatically in if I was in. Because Daddy said so. <laughs> Family Stone's first hit, Dance to the Music, went top ten, and success hit Sly in a big way. Wow, well, it was a little too big. It was almost too big to happen. You know, I thought we would happen, but I, at the time it was... Whew. <laughs> Sly Stone, Portrait of a Legend. 